it was just crazy how fast everything happened. So much so that I didn't make it to the hospital in time. I ended up having my daughter in my house, in my bed, with my husband delivering her. Baby, you the best, hands down. Uh huh. So special. You so fine, God bless you. Other girls, not an issue. Welcome back to my channel, Simply Jade 101. If you tuned into this video, then it's probably because you're pregnant, you want to be pregnant, or you're just simply interested in things related to pregnancy and babies, which was the case with me way before I was pregnant. I was always watching like pregnancy type videos even before I was even thinking about being pregnant. But I have since, you know, gone through my pregnancy, gone through labor and delivery, and my daughter is now a little over a year old so i'm ready to just kind of share a lot of tips a lot of things that have helped me throughout my pregnancy throughout having my daughter and throughout this first year of life which has been absolutely insane so today i'm going to be sharing about 10 tips that i believe were really beneficial to me when having a fast and easy delivery so stay tuned grab a notebook and pen because i believe that these are really like good simple tips to help you achieve a birth that you desire so i have to of course begin by giving this disclaimer these tips are things that i believe definitely help me but i'm very research based i'm not sharing these tips because i think that these are a they help me so they'll definitely work for you kind of a thing i did tons and tons and tons of research during my pregnancy i wasn't basing things on just like one or two people's experiences i read a lot i researched i talked to a lot of women keep in mind though that these are things that are not going to work for everyone for many different reasons obviously there's not one thing that's going to work for everyone but these things are for the majority i will say though if you are um if you have a high-risk pregnancy if you're going for a VBAC, vaginal birth after cesarean if you have had trouble in your in your first trimester or early on in pregnancy then definitely talk to your doctor before doing or trying any of these tips even if you're not high risk we want to talk to your doctor um, but certainly if you are if you have a high risk pregnancy then without a doubt run these things by your doctor first and just kind of ask them what their opinion is on um on you trying some of these so to begin i've kind of broken these down into you know when it comes to pregnancy and preparing for birth there is you know how you prepare for it physically emotionally and mentally and spiritually those are like the four aspects that you really want to focus on when you're talking about an easy or fast delivery the things that i mentioned my hope is that you don't take one thing and be like okay i'm gonna do that one thing because that helped her have a super fast delivery so that's the only thing i'm going to focus on like a lot of my tips kind of all work together in conjunction with one another so that you're looking at birth as like this whole experience and i believe that if you approach this video and approach your birth with that kind of mindset looking at, at everything like in this big picture kind of mentality then i think that these tips will really work for you if you are not willing to kind of go deep reflect um and do a lot of preparation from the inside then this ain't the video for you birth is really like the culmination of your pregnancy if you throughout your pregnancy like you just didn't slow down for a second to even like to even think about like this this amazing thing that's happening inside your body if you're just like ripping and running and going from one thing to the next and like just not taking a second to just breathe like focus in on yourself on your body then birth is going to be difficult for you um that's just kind of how it goes so i do have a video talking about my labor and delivery and that whole process because if you've seen that video then you know that i gave birth to my daughter like super quick lightning speed record speed it was just crazy how fast everything happened so much so that i didn't make it to the hospital in time i ended up having my daughter in my house in my bed 
with my husband delivering her who is not in any way like a medical doctor or anything like that so um i can say from experience that these things like really help just speed up the labor process um if you haven't seen that video then make sure you click below so number one and these these are not ranked in order like i said they all kind of work together but number one was red raspberry leaf tea i drank a uh, red raspberry leaf tea which is an herbal tea that is supposed to help uh, strengthen your uterus, tone your uterus, and soften your cervix, um, which are all things that you want when you're having a baby. You want a toned uterus to help with those contractions. You want a soft cervix to help slide that baby out. So um, red raspberry leaf tea is supposed to do that. You want to be careful with the type of red raspberry leaf tea that you buy. It is an herbal tea, so you want to try to get it as pure as possible. I did get mine from Amazon, so I'll leave the link below for that, the direct link for the one that I bought. But the teas that you find like in the supermarket, like twinning or celestial seasonings or anything like that, like that's not pure red raspberry leaf tea. I use the loose leaf red raspberry leaf tea. It, it pretty much looks like, <laughs> like weed sitting on my counter. Um, but... I would brew that and I would I would drink um, a glass of that throughout the day, starting at around, I think it was 36 or 37 weeks pregnant was when I started drinking it. You are allowed to drink it starting at 32 weeks. I think I intended to do it that early. I just never got around to it. So I didn't actually start until like 36, 37 weeks, um, which I think was, I think that worked for me. I don't think I would have wanted to do it earlier. Um, but you really want to be careful. Talk to your doctor. I'm going to say that throughout this. Talk to your doctor about when it's good for you to start. Like the end of my pregnancy was in the summer. So I did drink mine cold, like iced tea. Um, I'm going to put up a video of exactly how I made mine. Uh, but I did drink it cold. I kept it in the fridge and I would just drink like four or so glasses a day. And that was really like relaxing to me and I enjoyed the taste and obviously it really helped to tone my uterus. Um, and something else that you can consume that is known to help with fast labor um, are dates. I did not eat any dates during my pregnancy. Um, I've read and heard really great things about them. I just, it just wasn't for me at that point in pregnancy because I was, my midwife wanted me to cut back on sugar and dates are high in sugar. So I did not consume dates, but you can research eating dates during pregnancy. Again, you wanna wait until like 36 weeks. Um, but if you have like three dates a day, every day leading up to your labor, then, um, then it's supposed to also help soften your cervix and prepare your body for labor. Number two, chiropractic adjustments. I went to the chiropractor starting at around 36, 37 weeks. I went maybe two or three times a week. And it was like a quick 15 minute session where he would just help to align my body which in turn helped to align the baby in the womb. And I wasn't initially going to the chiropractor for this reason. I had like really, really bad pelvic pain because of where my daughter was positioned in the womb. She just like sat right on top of my pelvis. So it made like, it pretty much made it where I couldn't walk because I was in so much pain. So I was going to the chiropractor for that. And then like afterwards, when I started doing research, I realized like how effective chiropractic adjustments can be when you are pregnant. Again, this is something you wanna wait for towards the end of your pregnancy to do, and you really wanna get a trusted chiropractor. I tried two different chiropractors, and the first one, I can't even believe I let her put her hands on me. Like There was no way that she was qualified to work on pregnant women, even though she has a sign saying, I work on pregnant women. But I could just tell from her bedside manner, from her, her, um like the way her table was set up that she didn't know shit about working with pregnant women. And I should have followed my intuition as soon as I walked in and not even let her touch me because it can be dangerous if you go to the wrong person. But thank God everything was okay. I ended up finding a chiropractor that was literally right next door to my midwife's office. I did work with a midwife as opposed to um, an OB, which I'll do a separate video on. But I did go to a chiropractor that was right next to their office. He serviced all of their clients, all of their patients. So he was very, very much used to working with pregnant women. 
I'm gl so glad that I went to him because not only did it help my pelvis, but it did help to get the baby in alignment. And like I said, I had her at home. Nobody was prepared for that. God forbid if she wasn't in the right position um, to be able to like come through the birth canal, then it would have been, you know, this story would could have been different. So the reason that my birth, that it was so easy for her to just come on out is because she was in alignment. So chiropractic adjustments definitely help with that. Number three was using a birthing ball, which is the same thing as like a medicine ball that you'll find in the gym. I ordered one from Amazon. I'll leave the link below for the one that I purchased. And I started to use that medicine ball, birthing ball, every day starting at 36, 37 weeks, I never really sat on the couch. Anytime I was sitting down, I was sitting on the medicine ball, on the birthing ball. And I'll try to insert a clip of like how I was sitting on it and what I did on it to, um, to help again with alignment. Because if you take any birthing classes, you'll learn that alignment is key. One of the key things in birth when getting the baby out of the birth canal relatively easily. They like... Birth is just so amazing, but they have to be in a certain alignment in order to move out, out the body and things like the chiropractic adjustments, like sitting on the medicine ball helps to align your body, which helps to get them in position. So, um, my midwife has suggested like towards the end of my pregnancy to sit on the birthing ball whenever I got a chance. So for me, that just meant anytime I was sitting down, whether I was chilling, watching TV, whether I was eating dinner, what, whatever I was doing when I was sitting down, for the most part, I was on a birthing ball. And honestly, at the end of pregnancy where everything hurts, nothing you do is comfortable, the medicine ball actually helped with just comfort because it just helps with gravity and just helps with like everything. It was just really comfortable. But bouncing on the ball, doing like hip circles, those kind of things, it was it was really helpful with helping the baby to just drop down into the birth canal. And also when you are laboring, when you're going through contractions, it's also comfortable for that as well, which I'll get to in another video. Number four, belly sifting with a rebozo. I know that sounds crazy. It probably sounds like gibberish. You probably don't even know what that is. I didn't until my midwife kind of um, brought it to my attention. But um, a rebozo is basically like a long, it's a Mexican woven scarf. I'll show you mine. Looks like this, just a long scarf type thing. Like it literally looks like a scarf. And what you use this for is belly sifting. And I'll try to insert a video of my husband helping me to belly sift. I don't have a pregnant belly right now, but I'll try to show you what it looks like. Um, you want to be careful with this. You want to make sure like you watch YouTube videos on exactly how to do it. Maybe I'll make one of my own, but what it does it like I, again, I didn't use this to help with a faster labor. I just used it to give me some relief during my pregnancy. Cause again, my, uh, my daughter was sitting right on my pelvis. So the belly sifting and you just basically shift use the um, rebozo to kind of shift your belly back and forth. And what that does again is helping the baby to align and it's taking the pressure off of that area. In my case, it was my pelvis. So I did that like maybe two times a week towards the end of my pregnancy or whenever I just was uncomfortable, I would have my husband do it and my midwife showed him how to do it so he could do it for me at home. But you could also just watch videos to get a good idea of how to do it. But belly sifting with the rebozo was a godsend. Number five, um, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but that having sex helps to open up your cervix. And I learned from my midwife that there's actually something in semen that helps to soften your cervix. So it'll help you when you're moving into labor. Um, the, the Whatever ingredient it is in the semen will help to just soften up that cervix. And so I don't know for sure if I did have sex towards the end of my pregnancy. Don't remember. It's all a blur. Um, maybe I did. I think I did. But that would be something that you could use if you feel like, you know, if you feel like that. A lot of times we don't even want to be touched or looked at. But um, 
know that there is a greater benefit in terms of just helping the laboring process to begin. Number six um, is walking. So I'm not like an exercise junkie. I actually hate exercising. I don't do it often. I did not exercise throughout my pregnancy. So if you're that kind of person, then just know that um, I understand. But towards the end of my pregnancy, walking was really important to just help get your body moving because having a baby is like running a damn marathon. Like you have to be in, you have to get yourself in shape for that. And that doesn't mean that you have to work out throughout your pregnancy. Like I said, I didn't, but towards the end, I was trying to be intentional about walking, especially like the week leading up to my due date. Like the week leading up to my due date, I think I was walking all the time. And like I said, I was pregnant in the summer, so I would just go outside and walk all the time. And I had my daughter on a Saturday and I remember that Friday night, I was like, which is like two or three days before my actual due date. I remember thinking like, this baby needs to come out. I'm about to do everything I can to help her evacuate the premises. So I remember that night, like just walking, like I just went outside and just walked all the way around my complex, just walk, walk, walk. And then I had her the, the next morning. So walking is very, very helpful. Um, number nine is taking a shower and soaking in the tub. So those those two things were so helpful especially towards the end when i was just achy all the time and maybe my thoughts were going all over the place and i just needed to kind of decompress taking a bath or taking a shower with um i would do that with my i would take a bath and i would have my glass of red raspberry leaf tea and the combination of the warm bath and the cold tea was just like oh it was, it was amazing i think i might do that now but taking a bath just helps to relax your body and in labor, what you don't want to be is tense. Relaxation is key in order to, so that you're not fighting your body. Whatever is happening, you need to just allow it. And sitting, soaking in a tub just helps to relax the body. So I did that a lot throughout my pregnancy because it just helped me to get into that mindset. So the night before I went into labor, or actually while I was laboring, um, which wasn't a long time. I think I labored for like an hour or two. Um, I was like kind of in and out of the bath, just taking baths to just kind of relax my body. So you can use like a diffuser with essential oils, but you want to be careful with essential oils during pregnancy. Do your research. There are essential oils you want to try to avoid because they can actually cause contractions. Even if you're not in ingesting them, like just just sniffing them, just inhaling them. So be careful with essential oils. Do your research. Lavender is like a really simple one to use after your first trimester so i would do that have the diffuser going have some music that was really like my relaxation one of my relaxation techniques and in addition to that so this is where like when i was talking about like going deep all those other things i was doing taking teas and sitting on bars, like those things are great and they are needed but more importantly is your mindset like when you are getting ready to have a baby it's one of those things that nobody can help you but you and nobody can push that baby out but you well you and the baby are working together um so i did a lot of breathing exercises a lot of guided meditations a lot of visualizations and i even did something called hypnobirth which i didn't use when i was having her but they're just like hip hypnosis through meditations all centered around birth you can look it up on youtube but i did all of that throughout my pregnancy and definitely focused on it like that last month just getting getting my mindset ready for birth and this is something that you do want to work on throughout your pregnancy like you can't just just jump in like the last week and think that you're going to shift your mindset so like if you have a fear of birth of giving birth which i think we all do because we've heard so many stories um then you definitely want to start this early on in your pregnancy just thinking positively which means me leads me to number i think number nine positive thinking and watching positive birth stories on youtube so there are there are so many stories that we've heard about women having birth that obviously scares us and i made it a point from the first day I found out I was pregnant to to not watch or engage in any conversations or listen to any stories that were kind of the opposite of what I wanted to experience, right? Law of attraction. So if I know I wanted um, a, 
a smooth birth, an easy birth, a short birth, a quote unquote painless birth, then I didn't watch YouTube videos of women that were like, oh my God, this is so hard. I hate myself. Why did I do this? Da, 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 da. Like those thoughts might come up when you're giving birth, but I didn't, I didn't like to watch videos or stories that focus on like how hard birth is or how difficult birth is or how so, like none of that all of the stories that I watched were like even if it didn't go the way that the woman planned it's still the energy of it was positive and that's the kind of stuff that you want to surround yourself with when you are pregnant leading up to having a baby so definitely focus on your your breathing your your meditations and positive birth stories and number 10 which is a super simple one but we take it for granted is rest sleep relaxing those kind of things especially leading up to your due date you have to prepare your body for this process and you don't want to be like doing all this stuff leading up to having a baby because you're going to be so tired and wiped out before you even get to like the final hurrah which is labor pushing a baby out that whole thing so you really want to force yourself if you're one to like always be moving always be doing stuff you really want to force yourself to just rest and relax leading up to your due date i'm one in my family where i'm always like trying to do something for somebody else always like you know you need me i'm there kind of a thing and at the end of my pregnancy i was so tired and so just like over it all that I didn't have any space to do anything for anyone. And I made that very clear, which is difficult for me because I'm such like, such a, um, I'm a cancer. So, you know, naturally we're just very empathetic people, feeling people, sensitive people, always trying to do for people. And I couldn't do all of that while I was pregnant. So um, definitely rest and relax especially once you start getting into early labor active labor you really want to try to rest so one thing that my midwife suggested to me which again you want to talk to your doctor about this and and do what's do what you feel in your heart is right for you but i was okay with this um once the like the small contraction started which for me was like early in the morning it was like 1 a.m and they were so like I, like I could, I didn't, I barely even felt them, but I was timing them. They had so, somewhat of a pattern. So I knew that it was somewhat starting, but she suggested, okay, it's late. This might be a long process. You need to get some rest. If you feel you can't sleep, it's okay to take a Tylenol PM or a glass of wine. I didn't want to do the wine thing. Of course you can, if you want, plenty of women do it. I didn't want to do that. I was fine with taking the Tylenol PM. I took that and I knocked out for a couple of hours. And when I woke up, I was in active labor. Like I woke up like, whoa. That was a pretty intense contraction. But I had slept through like some of the smaller contractions. So I was able to rest and you need your rest when you're getting ready to have a baby. And I'm just gonna throw in a bonus tip. Um, affirmations you don't want to overwhelm yourself because there's a lot going on when you're getting ready to have a baby you don't want to overwhelm yourself with like this list of things that you should be doing but positive affirmations i meditated and focused on one affirmation during my whole pregnancy i just picked one affirmation and it was um the affirmation was to have an easy and effortless birth very simple that was what I meditated on throughout my whole pregnancy. I'd be driving to work, thinking about having an easy and effortless birth. I'd be taking a shower, easy and effortless birth. I'd be talking to my mom, easy and effortless birth. So much so that my mom, whenever, you know, whenever I would talk to her, she kind of held that space for me as well and remind, would remind me an easy and effortless birth. And when I tell you my birth was as easy and effortless as it gets, like that affirmation, it couldn't be more true. And it's not to say that if it doesn't go that way, that you should feel bad, like you did something wrong or anything like that, because, you know, that's life. But I would say that it's a higher chance that you will have that kind of birth if you focus on that and do things um, to prepare your body, to prepare your mind for it. Easy and effortless birth. And when I tell you that it was easy and effortless, like... 
I'm, I'm still amazed. Um, so those are my tips. I know this was a long video, but I have a lot to say. And I just want to let you, I just want to remind you that, you know, our bodies are designed to do this. And though there are, you know, many times where we might run into, um, you know, a few roadblocks or uh, things that might not allow the birth to go exactly how we wanted it to, just remember that, remind yourself that you were made for this, like that you can do this and any fears that you may have surrounding birth, you really want to try to tackle those as early on in your pregnancy as you can so that you can manifest the birth that you want. So uh, I thank you guys for watching this long behind video, uh, but I do hope that the tips were helpful for you. You do not, you know, have to do all 10 of these. Just if it's overwhelming you to even think about half this stuff, then just pick one or two that you feel that you can commit to and you feel that works for you. So definitely talk to your doctor or midwife or whoever your medical um, professional is that you're working with. And if you have any questions, then feel free to leave me a comment below. If you know of any pregnant women, your sister, your coworker, your cousin, your best friend, that could benefit from this video, then please make sure you share it with them. If you like this video, definitely go ahead and subscribe because I have so many more coming out like this because I just, like I could talk about this kind of stuff all day. So make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, for more, of course, natural hair videos because my hair is so bomb today and this was an accident. It almost looks like a wig. But for more tutorials, for more baby stuff, but you know, things that are very practical, then you need to hit that subscribe button. So thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.